If you're new to Clarice, you may not be aware that you can use attributes that you create in other programs inside of Clarice. Now this will allow you to do all sorts of cool things inside of Clarice with shading and scatters and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and show you how we can go about doing this. So I'm gonna drop in a scatter here real quick because we're gonna be using that. I'm also gonna split our view and create a material editor because we'll be referencing this here in a second. So let's jump over to Houdini and we're going to Go ahead and create some geometry and let's create a cube and let's just scale this up just a little bit and we're going to create some points from the volume. We're going to create a point cloud inside of Houdini to use inside of Clarice. So let's separate the points a little bit to kind of decimate some of those out of there. Uh, that should be good. And let's add a little bit of jitter to our points so they're not all in an array. And you guys probably can't see this very well. So let's go ahead and set the background to dark. And that'll probably look a bit better for you. Did that by pressing D, bring up this display options. So if you don't know how to do that, that's how you do it. So our points we now have created, but the one problem that we have is we don't have any attributes on them. So if you look over at the geometry spreadsheet, we just have position, which is going to be exported by default. When you create your file, your Olympic file, it's going to export all this by default. So we want to actually create some extra attributes here that we can then use inside of Clarice. So let's go ahead and go about that. Actually, we'll just leave that spreadsheet up. So we want to use an attribute create node. Now you would want to use uh, your simulation data if you're doing that. That's a little bit of a different uh, process. This is just going to be straight creating random attributes. Um, well, we're going to create scale and rotation, and we're going to randomize those through this just to kind of get you the understanding of how we are going to go about actually creating the, the attributes and how we can use them inside of Clarice. So you can use your, your simulation data, uh, does work differently. I'll probably cover that in a future video, but uh, for now, we're just going to create some random attributes. So we're gonna create two here. So our first attribute we'll call, so I believe it, I'm not 100% sure on this, I guess I should test it and we can actually do that. We'll just need, uh, name this uh, rotation and we'll name this one Clarice uh, scale. So I'm not sure if you have to actually start it with Clarice. Uh, there is a video on this on Isotropic's channel on how to use uh, attributes, but it's a little confusing, which is why I'm going over it, because um, it doesn't really explain how to go about things very well. So for, uh, for now, we'll just create a rotation and a scale, and we may need to rename this attribute, but uh, I'm not sure if we'll figure that out as we go. So for our scale, we want a float. Uh, for our rotation, we'll also use a float. Let's go ahead and create a rotation first. So we're gonna do a fit. So we'll do a fit zero one, and we're gonna do a random because we want a random, uh, random number based off of the point number. So random at pt num. And then we'll set this from zero to 360 because we want a full 360 degree rotation. Now, this is just one value of our rotation, so we need to actually up this size, so two and three, because as you guys know, there is a uh, X, Y, and a Z rotation. So let's go ahead, we'll copy this, and we'll go over to the next one, and we're gonna multiply this by a random number just to get it to be different than our first one, which how weird that first number created uh, the same same thing. So well, I guess it's going, yeah, it'd be zero. So your point, num, I don't know. It's always gonna create the same thing, I guess. Uh, so for our value, our fourth value, that doesn't really matter. And then we should be all good for our rotation. Now for our scale, 
and you inside of Houdini, if you look, let's go back to our box here. If you look, we have this uniform scale, which we can just set uh, up and down and it'll affect. But if you look up here, we have a size, uh, a three size attribute like your rotation is. And so in Clarice, there is no, there is no singular uniform scale like there is in Houdini. And we can see that if we go down to our, in our settings here, if we go down to our scatter scale, you can see that it's a three uh, attribute um, setting. So we will need to create a, another three attributes for our scale. So our size three, and then we will set the value uh, to something random like we did before. So fit a one and then random at PT num. And then we'll set this one from 0 0.5 to something like two. And that should be fine. So we'll copy that parameter and we'll paste relative references because we want this to be the same across all three uh, sides. We want to, this is how you're going to achieve a, a uniform scale. Now, obviously if you don't want a uniform scale, you're going to set these values to something different. And the fourth value, right, you see right here, it doesn't really matter uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, it's like your RGB values, and then the fourth value is your alpha. Uh, it's like a, a rough way of kind of understanding it. So now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and create a null, because the last node in your tree is going to be, whatever the name of it is going to be, the name of your exported geometry. And then we'll do a limbic output, wire that up, and we'll just uh, uh, go to our file path and we'll call this Clarice demo.abc. And then we'll just save that out. So now we can go into Clarice and we'll go up to file and reference and we'll bring in our ABC file. So this will be our point cloud. And we can go ahead and just scale this up just a bit so that we can have a little bit better separation between the two or between the, the points here. So let's go back up in our scene and let's go ahead and create just a box. We'll use a box to distinguish the rotation. So in our scatter here, if I select that once again, we can go ahead and set our geometry to the box and our geometry sport to our point cloud. And now we have our objects being scattered onto each individual point. Pretty simple there, something that we've covered before. Uh, very easy and simple to do. But now let's actually bring in those attributes that we've been using inside of Houdini. So the way we do that is in our material editor here, we can right click and start typing extract and we'll extract our properties. So let's set this property to our scale. I'm gonna disappear here for a second and we can go to this property name and we can either start typing or we can uh, just select that find button. And it looks like they don't actually have to be called uh, or start with Clarice. So let's go ahead and select that Clarice scale. And you can see right away that our objects are being affected by the uh, the scale attribute that we have. Now, if you wanna see what the individual um, attributes are that you have on your uh, object, you can go into a, let's see, a property editor here, and you can see all the objects uh, properties that it has assigned to it. Now, it's not gonna give you the values. I wish that you could see each individual value, like you could twirl this down and see each value for each individual uh, property that you have. But the way that you can get around that is if you come to our particle paint options here and we go to, let's see, what, which one is it? The, so we want the, let's see, the display, which one is it? One of these settings sets it to the point. So maybe we need to set the scale. Yeah, okay, so once you set the, the property that you wanna look at, so our Clarice scale that we uh, uh, exported, we can set this to number. And now if we look at each individual point, we can see um, one of the values that, uh, that this has assigned to it. So you're not gonna be able to see all three. You'll just see the, the first one, I believe. And we can probably figure that out for sure. If I look at the rotation, 
it's uh, actually that's right. So the since it's a three uh, attribute that has different values for each individual uh, like setting, uh, so that R, G, and B values essentially, or it's going to have or the X, Y, and Z uh, values. It's going to not show you, but since these are all the same, I believe it will show you. So if all of the attributes match, so since all these scales match, I think it will show it. But since these are all going to be different, it's not going to show it, at least uh, so kind of what I'm coming to gather. But let's actually let's close that out. And let's go back up into our scene here. So let's go ahead and bring in our rotation. So we'll add in the property here. And then we'll go ahead and set our rotation and we'll set that to our scatter rotation. So nothing happens right away. And the reason for that is we go down to our attributes and our scatter. This scatter rotation down here is set to zero. So important to note that all of these attributes are being multiplied by whatever is in here. So if I set this to two by two by two, it's going to multiply it all by two. So with that logic in place, we can go ahead and set this to 360, 360, and 360 to get the full rotation values of what we had set. Now you can see that we have a bunch of random rotation for each individual point that we have. And obviously you can animate this stuff and, and do all sorts of cool stuff with that um, once you export that animated Alembic and it will work perfectly with this. And then obviously you can still use the rotation variance. So if I set this to like, you know, four or 40, you know, it's gonna give us a bunch of random values or a bunch of further random values, I should say. So you can still still use all of that. Um, like I said, the position is exported um, already from each uh, point. So you don't have to worry about that. But uh, if you're copying objects to those points and you want to save the, I'm not actually, I'm going to, I'm going to backtrack. I'm going to not go down that, that rabbit hole right now. So, uh, this is how you actually use the, the attributes inside of Clarice. Let's go ahead and do one other thing here and let's go ahead, jump back out and we'll create another piece of geometry. And then we'll just create a sphere here and let's just get rid of those particles and we'll set this to a polygon and we'll just crank this up a little bit and then we can do a, uh, yeah, attribute randomize and why that up. Now we have a bunch of random color onto our object, which is what I was looking to illustrate here. So let's do a Lembic output because this one works a little bit differently. And we'll just re-navigate to our demo scene. So let's do color demo, uh, color demo dot ABC. And then we can save that out and jump back into Clarice here. Let's go ahead and reference that file one more time. And let's go ahead and just hide that scatter and hide the uh, box that we have, even though it's kind of hidden behind our sphere here. So oops, I clicked on our points. Let's disable those as well. So now if I create a standard material and then I bring in our attribute, so extract property, this should work hopefully. Yep, CD would be our color. So if I plug this straight into our base color and if I go into our previs mode so we can see our color, uh, and actually we need to assign this as well. So assign that to our sphere. If I plug this directly into our base color, it's going to work right away, which I was not expecting. Ah, uh, that's right. I remember what I was expecting. So if I, if I plug that directly into a base color on an object that's not being scattered, it's going to work uh, perfectly. If I were to actually uh, undisable this and our scatter as well, and I set our geometry to our sphere. Oops, that's not the one I wanted. Uh, let's see, yes, this one. And um, it looks like it's still working, which I wasn't expecting. So you should have to use a, um, a instance color 
node. I've had to use this before. So you may have to use this for certain situations with our color. Let's go back to our standard surface. Uh, like I said, our instance color. Sometimes you have to use this. I was expecting to have to use that with this. So sometimes to in order to get them to show up, you have to use that. Uh, I'm not sure what I was doing before that uh, that was being required, but that may be something that you have to do. Just be aware. If you plug this in and it looks like this, with our all of our instances being straight black like this, uh, you may have to plug in this instance color. And obviously, if you don't need it, then you don't need it. Just be aware of that. Uh, like I said, not really sure uh, what I was doing before that uh, I required that. I thought it was just random scattering. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. There are a bunch of other things that you can do to uh, do some cool things with attributes inside of Houdini and then bring those into Clarice. So be going over those here in the future as well. So keep an eye out for those. I also have uh, a bunch of getting started tutorials with Clarice. If you're new to it, definitely go and take a look at that series because uh, it'll run you through basically everything from your first time into the program all the way through the final process of actually rendering and, and setting up the scene and doing everything that goes along with that. But we're going to be doing a lot more with Clarice here, uh, a lot more with Houdini and integrating that with Clarice as well. So keep an eye out for that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.